No worries. So hello everyone and welcome back to another In Conservation With. Uh, today uh, I'm joined by the fantastic uh, Amy Hall, uh, which you're <laughs> <laughs> picking you up there, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, which uh, is a very good friend of mine and has been for, for quite a while now. Uh, so today we are talking about the Cameron Bespoke Trust and I noticed we both have our very lovely yeah. hoodies on. They're very <laughs> cosy and can be very warm. They are lovely. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so, uh, Amy, so would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I will do. So, um, I'm Amy. I'm a zoologist. I'm in my fourth year of university at um, University of Exeter, but I'm actually down in Cornwall on the Penryn campus in what I think is one of the best places in the world. You can argue that, um, <laughs> but it's a very nice place to be a zoologist. Um, I'm doing my master's on British Antarctic survey data looking at albatross and petrel chicks as indicators of conditions in the Southern Ocean, which is um, almost like a dream project for me because albatrosses and birds like that are why I kind of got into wildlife um, and birds in general. So it's, it's a very exciting year for me and it's been going all right considering everything that's been going on. I'm using loads of data um, so I've just got my head in a computer trying to ignore everything that's going on around me, really. Um, but that's me, and I've been a young ambassador for the Cameron Bespoke Trust for five years now. Um, and yeah, I've been involved in various ways in that time and really expanded my skill set and had a very sort of immersive experience in conservation as, um, as an ambassador. So that's brief intro to me wow that sounds pretty amazing <laughs> do some absolutely brilliant work uh, with the trust and generally um so how did you get into nature in the first place so that's do you know what that's one of those questions that always gets mm. do you know what, everyone whenever mm -hmm. you want to talk to me about the cameras welcome trust it's always what got you involved um and it's probably like a really cliche answer i feel like i've always had an interest i i passionately believe that all young people or children have an interest in nature um, and more than an interest I think they have a fascination with nature which unfortunately gets lost at some stages but for me very luckily I grew up in Rutland who some people might have visited Rutland because of the bird fair or for Rutland water um, and in Rutland there's loads of wildlife mainly the Rutland Osprey project and having the nature reserve there meant that I could get involved um, so I started getting involved with conservation more practically when I was um, I think I was 13 or 14 with the Duke of Edinburgh volunteering group and unfortunately that doesn't run anymore but it was it was called wild skills and we would meet every month and go around the reserve look at wildlife um, repair fences build paths um, and generally just enjoy being on the reserve so I think having that around um, and also having really supportive parents who don't mind me disappearing out over the fields for a few hours um, really helped as well. Um, so was there any other of your friends sort of at school interested or were you the only one? Um, I would say I was the only one um, that I knew of. It wasn't until later that I found out that there were a couple of other people that kind of had the interest but um, obviously at school you don't really talk about that kind of thing. Although I think um, I'd say my experience was quite unique in that I never suffered as a result of my interest. Um, if anything it was something that people knew me by in a, in a, in a, in a nice way. Um, luckily I had a big sister at the school and I think that helps a lot with street bread. <laughs> when you've got a cooler older sister that um, perhaps isn't always looking at birds at the weekend. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't know anybody else at school, but that never really put me off. If anything, I quite liked that it was kind of like my thing and it was something that I, I enjoyed and it was like an escape um not really an escape from school because that sounds like a bad thing i really enjoyed school but um yeah didn't know anybody else and it was weird to to think that there's all this wildlife around and no one's looking at it um but yeah you probably had a similar experience yeah yeah exactly the same i mean um still i'm the only one have my sort of school friends uh i'm a sixth form now but 
we sort of all stuck together and we're sort of I'm the only one that's interested but my friends are really supportive like I used to get a bit bit teased about it maybe in the younger years but now I mean everyone's so supportive like they share all my things and uh, yeah. they always uh, know me if, if there's anything to do with the environment or wildlife they always look to me and ask me stuff so I mean I can't I can't complain they're always quite good <laughs> yeah no do you know I think you really have to own it don't you if that's what you're interested in and people know that there's no point in pretending that you're something you're not if you enjoy it own it and mm -hmm. I think that's probably part of why sort of you get to a position like we have with the eight young ambassadors because you need people that don't really care to, to mm -hmm. get people, other people interested in it that maybe might not have considered it before yeah I think it's sometimes nice to have sort of a unique interest like that I think it's quite nice to be <laughs> to be a bit different I, I mean I've always been a yeah. bit different I mean I used to be into street dance back in the day <laughs> oh my god did you oh god, the same person <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I didn't even know that Glitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, th that was my past hobby I went from street dance and all into Michael Jackson and sort of wow. Usher and people like that yeah. and then went into bird watching and wildlife photography so um yeah <laughs> I love it didn't know that about you Maya <laughs> oh really I mean my um what my username on one of my social medias is uh, my street dancer wow so I mean a lot of people ask me yeah Street dance slash bird one? watch. I'm sure you can do it <laughs> at the same time. That's very compatible. <laughs> mm, definitely. <laughs> so, um, so you're here tonight to talk about the fabulous Camera Bespoke Trust. Yeah. And yep, that's it. Show it off. <laughs> um, I myself are. Uh, it's really close to my heart. Uh, I've been so involved with it too. I'm really lucky enough to be a young ambassador uh, for the trust and support their events and um yeah i just think they're amazing they're doing amazing absolutely amazing work so how did you sort of first find out about the trust what sort of made you want to get involved with them so um 2016 was when i first sort of branched out in the world of conservation and started sort of trying to network with other people and i applied to the bto young birders camp um, which we met on that was where uh, maya and i began our friendship um, and that completely opened up this whole world to me that I didn't know was there before, um, meeting all these young people. And it was a camp that was sponsored by the Cameron Bespolka Trust. And before I'd applied to it, I hadn't heard of the Cameron Bespolka Trust, largely because um, I had no sort of online presence in a conservation capacity like I do now. Um, and so I feel like a lot of these opportunities you hear about via Twitter, and I just didn't have that sort of thing, so I didn't know. Um, and I saw on the, the camp thing, there was a little sentence at the bottom that said, the Cameron Bespoke Trust will be um, running a scholarship for one of the BTO Young Birders um, attendees to go to New York. And it, you had like an opt-in thing, whether you wanted to be considered for it. And I kind of ticked that thinking, I may as well, like I'll tick it. I don't think I'll get anything because I don't, I've never done anything like this before. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and yeah by some miracle I got a phone call from the BTO a few weeks after the camp that was asking if I wanted to go on this trip and I said yes absolutely and that's when I met Corinne who's um, one of the co-founders of the Canvas Volker Trust and she was so lovely and really guided me through because it, it's quite a big thing I was 16 or 17 traveling to North America on my own and she really sort of guided me through that and from that I wrote blogs about my time there and kind of just continue to be involved with the trust because everything that they're doing is what I'm so passionate about and it's benefited me from the, the BTO camps and from being involved and it's it's really lovely to now be in a position where I can give back to to the trust um who have they've really given me so much and that's very much down to, to Corinne and how supportive she is I mean you know she's mm. amazing mm -hmm. uh, with all the young people um so yeah, that's how I got involved. And it was very um, organic, I think. I never, I don't really remember a start point of when I sort of became involved. And because I was the first to receive the scholarship and we didn't have like a young ambassador program at that point, it was very much like, um, as a young person involved with the trust, I feel like we need to share what they're doing with other young people. Um, so yeah, it kind of 
exactly from there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Corinne is probably one of the loveliest people I've ever met. I mean, she's yeah. so supportive. I think we're really lucky to have her. Is she? Um, in- she's just amazing. I think she she's might be. <laughs> shout out to Corinne. <laughs> You're yeah, great. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how was that? How was the? It was Cornell, wasn't it? You went yeah. To- yeah, the corner. Was that trip? Oh, it was insane. I talk about it a bit more in the presentation, but it was one of those um, trips where it happened so quickly. So it was a, a four day trip to New York to go to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And it was one of those things where, because of the jet lag and how quickly it all happened, within a week, I'd been at school, gone to Cornell, and then I think I was back at school for the end of the week or for, the, for like Monday the next week. And I was like, did that? Just wow. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was insane. It was um, it was like a really intense four days because you're in a new place. Um, the the time difference was really weird. One morning I woke up um, and panicked. So I thought everyone had left because I sort of woke. We were staying in university accommodation, and I was on my own in a room. Um, and I opened the door and looked out into the corridor, and I was like, "Where is everyone?" because my alarm had gone off I was like no one's here um and jet lag I'd woken up in the middle of the night I think it was like 4 a.m 3 a.m I'd got dressed got all my stuff and was sitting outside waiting oh and I realized God. that I still <laughs> had a few hours before we got to go um, unless you were prepared <laughs> yeah <laughs> panic um, yeah. but yeah no it was it was an incredible experience and um I talk a bit more about it in the presentation about exactly what I did and what I got up to and um yeah it was just such an incredible opportunity and it's one of those um places that is really magical for anyone that's interested in birds it's a it's a hub for ornithology so much exciting research going on there and the american way of ornithology is just it's so different to what i was used to here um so yeah it was amazing (laughs) yeah i would love to visit there one day myself yeah it's such a brilliant place you need to and the people there as well like, I think the people make it as well because there's obviously because they're American to British people they seem quite eccentric or or whatever but actually they're just so passionate about what they were doing and there were people from all different backgrounds and they'd come some of the staff would come and have dinner with us because we'd have dinner in the middle of um like the the entrance bit to the to the lab it's like the foyer so after they closed they put the tables out and we'd have dinner and yeah, they were just, it was amazing. I had such a good time. And I, I remember surprisingly a lot of it considering how quickly it all happened and, and how long ago it was as well now. I guess not that long, but in terms of my life, it was quite a long time ago. That was, so that was 2016, that was. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, it does seem quite a long time. It wasn't like four years ago, uh, <laughs> four or five years ago now, but it doesn't feel, doesn't feel that long. Uh, well, it feels quite a long, it feels really long, long way for us. <laughs> But I guess the time of life that we were at, that you have lots of transitions. Like That's different, true. Different changes. I mean, I was probably, we were like, you're a bit older than me, aren't you? So I was about 13, I think, on that first bird camp uh, where we met each other. But I can't believe I went to that bird camp at 13. I didn't know anyone. <laughs> Um, it was like a bit of a leap wasn't it when you it think was. about it but then I think that's why it was there was you and I and there were some other girls there and I think that's why we all got on so well mm-hmm. because I don't know about you but when I went I was so worried that everyone else was going to know so much mm-hmm. and like, be so experienced but then we got there and it was all like we all had loads in common and mm-hmm. we none of us were really like massively knowledgeable yet so it was yeah really nice but yeah it feels like young I know, it does so would you like to tell us a bit more about the Cameron Stroke Trust? I would love to. Let me share my screen. Right. <laughs> Let's have a look. Get it all up and running. Uh, okay. Can everyone see that? Is that all okay? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Lovely. Um, okay, so I, I don't really need to introduce myself again, but um, I'm going to talk to you a bit about the Cameron Bespolka Trust, which is a charity that myself and Maya are involved in um, as young ambassadors and basically share with you how we are working to connect young people with nature um, all over the UK and further afield. So uh, the, the trust was set up in memory of Cameron Busbolger, who you can see pictured here, who lost his life far too young um, and he was a brilliant, brilliant young naturalist and bird watching was really important to him like it is to many other young naturalists at the moment. Um, he 
was so inspirational in terms of his passion for the natural world and so the Carambas Bulker Trust in his memory wants to provide opportunities for other young people to sort of develop an interest um, and nurture an interest in the natural world by providing immersive experiences for them to experience it um, to, to kind of find out what's around them that they maybe missed before um, and that they didn't know about and they weren't didn't know that was accessible by them. We do this by partnering with um, loads of different kinds of organisations. You can see on the left hand side of the screen here the types of people that we work with. Um, and there's some pretty big ones there, like the BTO and the Cornell Lab, RSPB, but also some smaller ones. And the reach that we've managed to achieve through working with these people is far greater than perhaps if we'd have tried to branch out on our own. And we are like now the Camembert Bulga Trust is fairly well known in conservation circles, largely thanks to these organisations partnering with us on our work. So the types of things that we offer um, are largely wildlife camps. We aren't strictly birding people. Um, we do a lot with birders and young birders, but we are more um, focused on naturalists as a general so that we don't limit ourselves to one certain group of people. Perhaps our most well-known partnership um, within the young naturalists world is the BTO Young Birders Camp which Murray and I have already talked about um, in this presentation. That opportunity for me, like I've said, was so incredible. It's uh, a weekend that we spent in Norfolk and it happens every year, um, obviously not this year, um, but I guess that's, that's a given. It happens every year and we're based at the BTO headquarters in Thetford and basically spend the weekend exploring Norfolk, doing ringing, learning about BTO surveys like BBS, and seeing some fantastic wildlife whilst out and about on the reserves. I think the picture of everyone standing on the bench was um, when we were looking at cranes, who uh, I think there were some cranes really far off in the distance, that's why we were all standing up. Um, we also partner with um, organisations down south, so we've had our Wild New Forest camps, which have been aimed at slightly younger children, um, and they're more like naturalist camps, and I attended one of those a couple of years ago, and um, sort of as an ambassador to help out and to be a mentor for the young people, particularly the young girls. Um, and that was so much fun. We saw so many cool things. We got to go and see night jars um, and just spend a fab weekend in the new forest. We've also sponsored um, Osprey Days with the Rutland Osprey Project and also a group of young naturalists at Blashford. So we get involved with loads of young people, primarily through sponsoring opportunities for them to learn about wildlife. However, we aren't restricted just to field-based experiences. We've been running the RSPB uh, in partnership. We've sponsored the RSPB Wild Art Competition for a few years now. You can see some entries here. The Frog is from 2019 and the Bottom Fear from 2020. And they're just a, just a few of the um, many incredible entries. And there's been some great category winners. Blow my mind at how amazing the art is from these kids. And this runs from... Um, early primary up through till secondary I believe age um, so that has enabled a, a wide range of young people to think about nature in a different context to how perhaps they may have before. I think the key for getting young people involved with nature is to make it accessible. Um, not everyone has access to wild spaces that they can go and see and I'm sure I'm on the Urban Birder um, webinar so I can't say that urban areas don't have wildlife because they absolutely do um, but some people maybe don't have the facilities to access it maybe they don't have um, the equipment or the ability um, either way art competitions are a fantastic way of getting young people to focus on wildlife in a different context and it's super fun like everyone likes doing a bit of arts and crafts and you can tell that in the entries that they really had fun doing this however I think for me the most exciting thing that the Karambas Bulker Trust offers is the Cornell Young Birder Scholarship. Um, so I've already talked about this a uh, little bit so I won't go into too much depth but it's, it's an annual event that basically enables a young person from the UK to fly to New York to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology to attend their Young Birders events with loads of other young birders from across America both North and South. Um, it's an incredible opportunity it's an amazing place to go to um, and a great chance to network as well with future um, ornithologists.
when I went, um, I was the first attendee. Um, there's a pretty horrendous picture of me next to the Cornell lab entrance. I wasn't expecting any pictures to be taken, but I got pushed by the entrance sign and they were like, let's take a picture, it's gonna be great. Um, and I think for me, this opportunity was more than just going to America and seeing, um, I, I added over a hundred species to my life list. I got to see the incredible archives they have. I saw a wandering albatross which was insane it wasn't alive it was very much stiff and in a drawer but it was still very cool um but it also enabled me to start practicing some skills i hadn't done before mostly article writing um my favorite article that i wrote after being in america was this one for the bto news magazine um their winter 2016 copy i wasn't sure what to write about, how to write. Um, and since this piece, I've written a few more pieces and sort of really developed my skills for writing, which has helped with blogging um, and also just general like university work um, and writing things that people want to read. Um, that was really something that I took from this trip. The lab itself, you can see here, um, is a crazy, crazy place. It's really, really cool. You can see uh, I hadn't done tons of research before I went. Um, I guess the age I was, I was like a bit naive thinking, yeah, I'll just go home and find out. When I got there, I wasn't expecting it to be like a super modern building, but it was. It's this incredible building that you can see here that looks out onto a swamp. And the glass frontage that you can see on the right has loads of viewing um, seating so that you can sit and watch what's out there. They've got feeders and there's hummingbirds flitting around and you've got all sorts flying in and moving around on the edge of the swamp. Um, and then on the left, you can see that those are all offices and underneath is the um, museum. So they've got loads of specimens. That's where the albatross was. And also the amazing Macaulay Library, which is an audio library of bird songs and calls over decades that have been collected in all sorts of crazy parts of the world. Um, so it was amazing to see like these big old wheels that had been collected in the Amazon or in some other far-flung place. Um, and I was also introduced to eBird here. So people on this call probably use BirdTrack or eBird. Um, basically, it's, it's an app that you can have on your phone to record your bird sightings. And from the sightings, they're able to produce these amazing maps, these GIFs. Um, when they showed us these GIFs, I was absolutely mind blown. I thought it was so cool. Um, I'd never seen anything like this before um, and I'm a bit of a, a nerd when it comes to data presentation and plotting stats and showing things in a really exciting way for people to look at and think wow that's that's actually really interesting. Um, I can see Dennis giving that a thumbs up. Dennis is a fan of eBird. <laughs> um, so yeah I was introduced to this whole world and I think this is a really great experience and it's something that I cannot be more grateful to the Cameron Muspelka Trust for. Um, and it's something that we need to keep doing for young people and we need to keep offering these opportunities because it benefited me so, so much. And the way that we're hoping to reach loads and loads more young people is through an exciting and ambitious new project, Cameron's Cottage. Um, this is the renovation of a field, uh, an old derelict cottage in the New Forest in a, a, a plot of land which is a thousand acres called RSPB Franchises Lodge. We're partnering with the RSPB on this project. It's a three bedroom cottage renovation um, and we're hoping to install a field centre. I say hoping, we are installing a field centre. So construction started in October 2020 um, and it's set to be finished um, by the end of spring, early summer this year. So keep an eye out on our social media and on our website because there could be news about this um, this year and how other people can get involved. Um, the, the whole inspiration behind this cottage was uh, from a, a trip that Cameron took when he was younger to a cottage in Florida where he spent a few nights um, just enjoying wildlife. He had a screech owl and they saw an armadillo and we're really hoping that that kind of experience will be had by young people coming here um, and hopefully they will develop lifelong memories about their time in nature. It's very much built with wildlife in mind. You can see in the bottom picture there, it's set in a glorious location in the New Forest with some fantastic wildlife nearby, such as goshawks and there are hen harriers also. We've been, we've installed some bat bricks. I think that's what they're called. Um, that one there on the left hand side, I think is for horseshoe bats. Um, but basically we're trying to incorporate the wildlife as well as 
be able to, to to have it as a place from which we can go and see wildlife um, so hopefully you don't have to walk too far from the cottage to see some pretty cool stuff you can see in the top right corner there the cottage under construction and i think a lot of the timber work has now been put in so hopefully it will start to take shape more and more in the coming weeks um, i visited the cottage a couple of years ago um, and i made this short video so i'm going to play it um, i've lowered the quality so hopefully it shouldn't lag too much um, but you can see it on YouTube if it's not great. Here we are at Cameron's Cottage in the middle of the RSPB Reserve Franchises Lodge, which is right in the heart of the New Forest. We're hoping it will sleep up to 18 people, so it'll be a really beautiful retreat for people to come with their schools, nature groups, and uh, many different environmental groups that can come and stay as well. And we're going to have a field study centre, so that again, it will be just a, an educational base for people when they come and spend the day here, as well as this very small lab type of technical room for university students to maybe doing some research to work on their thesis. For us to have a base was really important and really the one experience we want people to go away with is you know isn't wildlife brilliant isn't nature fantastic and shouldn't we all have a chance to really enjoy it. There's so much for anyone who loves nature here to really immerse themselves in such a wide variety of, of really special activities. Having not really been stuck in when I was when I was a youngster, I, I never had the opportunity to come out and even go to the BTO bird camps and things like that. So definitely this place would have turned my head. It's really special. For Cameron, there was a life-changing moment when he went to stay at an Audubon cabin in Florida, which was uh, an amazing experience for him. It, it told him how much more there was to do to engage with wildlife, birds and nature. It's in part of New Forest, like you said, so you've got all sorts of birds like red starts, probably nesting in this area, goshawks just down there, you've got hen harries in the surrounding heathland and it's just a perfect place to get young naturalists involved into nature. We've come such an incredibly long way with the, with the Cameron Bespolka Trust. We could not have done any of this without the help of all our amazing, incredible supporters and donors. This cottage has obviously been a huge project for us and to achieve this ambition to open something as, as incredible as this has been only um, achievable because of the help we've received, of which we are so incredibly grateful. We hope to continue fundraising and getting more supporters on, on board and realising what a difference we can actually make. <laughs> There we go. Hopefully you got most of that. If not, like I said, it's on the website and it's on um, YouTube as well. Um, so if you wanted to keep updated with the project, the Cameron's Cottage project, um, here are our social media handles and you can just Google the Cameron Bisbolka Trust and we have a newsletter. So if you sign up to that, you'll also get emails into your inbox. Um, so in that video, you saw um, Alex and Tommy, who are two of our amazing young ambassadors. 
Um, overall, there are 12 of us on the Young Ambassador team. Um, there's Alex, uh, who was in the video. He's involved with various ecological surveys. Andrew, um, who joined us in August, along with Finn and Luke, who is a very talented nature writer. Um, Arjun, who is brilliant. He's been involved with us for a couple of years now. He's been running walks alongside Sam and Maya. Um, and I don't know who else, I probably missed people out here, and Kabir, and has started uh, an account called Ecos, Birding Ecos, on Twitter, which is about bird sound recording, so if you're interested in that, definitely check him out. We've got Ellie, who's our resident horticulturist. Um, she actually won the RHS Young School Gardeners Award in 2018. Finn, who is really passionate about engaging young people with wildlife, definitely keep an eye out for all the work he's going to be doing with us in the next year or two. He's very keen to stay on with the trust. We've got Kabir, who many of you may have already heard of. Um, he's a passionate, incredible public speaker and campaigner. Luke, who, like I said, has joined us recently. He's an entomologist, crazy about spiders, knows so much. Megan, um, who has also been involved with us for a couple of years, and I think was at the first bird camp or one of the bird camps I met her at one of the BTO bird camps. She's recently been fundraising for the Camembert Boggle Trust by selling face masks. So if you want to top up on your face mask um, stocks, uh, check out the options that Megan's got for the patterns. Maya needs no introduction, um, and Samuel, who's involved with the BTO, um, as well as being a great birder and also taking part in Young Birders Walks as well. And Tommy, who is, alongside being a Young Ambassador, uh, the Youth Engagement Officer for Hampshire Ornithological Society. Um, this is a, a killer team. They all do so much stuff to make sure that the work of the Cameron Bosbogger Trust connecting young people with nature um, happens. They're all so inspirational. I mean, what I've told you through their brief introductions um, is the tip of the iceberg. They're really, really impressive young people um, and they're so passionate that they're, they're going to be doing some great things in the next next few years for sure. Our Young Ambassador programme kind of um, was reformed in August when we recruited Andrew, Finn and Luke to make the team a 12 and we've decided to take a direction with this which enables our Young Ambassadors to receive training um, alongside offering what they what they offer for young people to make them really exceptional um, leaders in conservation and part of this has been a partnership with CJ Wildlife you can see the logo on the right there um, who are a, a wildlife food um, organization bird seed bird feeders that kind of thing um, and they're basically just a pro providing support to the young ambassadors for carrying out their projects obviously this year it's been a bit not much we can do, although Maya did um, use their support for the Wildlife Garden and hopefully in 2021 we'll see a few more projects coming along with CJ Wildlife. Um, they're a great group of young people and this was a picture from Bird Fair last year, 2000, not last year, 2019, not 2020, um, which was the first time that I think we all got together or most of us got together and really um, worked on what we were going to say to the public about what we're doing um, and, and how we're doing it because a lot of us are very far apart and it's really hard to work with people when you're so far apart. I mean this year has been a great example of trying to like get things done over the internet and when we're trying to get young people involved with nature it's really hard so this was a great opportunity to see everyone and to talk to an audience about the Cameron's Bulk of Trust and it was really well received. At the start of the presentation when we were sort of setting everything up we were saying to each other Oh, I think it'll probably just be like our parents and then like maybe some other people that have seen it. We weren't expecting anything massive because there's some great speakers at Bird Fair. Um, but I don't know if it was just because I had good memories of it, but I feel like we filled the tent pretty well um, with people who came along to listen to what we had to say. And that's largely owing to these amazing people that have such a great following on social media because of the amazing work that they do. For 2021, um, we've decided to create an action plan. So um, in summer 2020, I became involved with the Young Ambassador Programme in a slightly different way. Um, I became a trustee for the Cameron Bulker Trust. And so part of my role as trustee is heading up the programme and making it um, more um, directed and sort of being able to lead the young people and think about what we do we want to do and how we're going to achieve it and have it in a much more sort of structured way. For 2021, I thought it was important we had an action plan because 2020 was a bit rubbish and very deflating for us. 
because the summer is a time when we have so many opportunities to get out and to do things with young people and to see each other and be in the field, see fantastic birds and wildlife. Um, we didn't get to do that, but there are things that we can do. Um, so we made our action plan and you can see here, there are still some things that we have to wait for Boris to give the go ahead on. I doubt he will in the near future, but anyway, we've got our young birders walks, um, which are a staple for our ambassadors young naturalist competitions which will be able to be done um, with lockdown restrictions similar to the wildlife trusts challenges that they do at the 12 days um, wild um, one they've done recently the three peach challenge fundraiser was an idea of ellie's that um, she's going to be working on when we know whether we can do it or not and um, of course with the fundraisers also a virtual raffle so we can raise a bit more money to contribute towards the work that we're doing we're also hopefully going to be embarking on a Cameron's Cottage social media campaign, so definitely keep an eye out for that. We're going to be sharing some information about the cottage once it gets nearer to completion, about how people can get involved with it um, and what it means for young people wanting to um, explore wildlife, because it's going to be a really great place for people to do their research um, for university or just to get out, get some volunteering done. Um, and of course, the Instagram live quiz at the bottom, which is another lockdown staple, I think, which hopefully we'll be able to find someone with a pretty big platform that can do that with us, who can get some, a different following that we have already. And I think I've put this picture on, this is a picture of our Christmas quiz that we did this year. Um, this quiz for me summed up what the Young Ambassadors are about and what we do. We had 35 people on this call, which might not sound like loads, but 35 young people who have come along for the big bespoke bird off, I think is pretty impressive. Um, and it's testament to the work that the ambassadors put in to getting people involved and getting people um, signed up to these kinds of things. Um, they're a great group of people and please look out for any other things that we're gonna be doing by following us on social media and following the individual accounts. Um, they're all lovely, lovely people. So as a charity, of course, Central, to, to what we do is the funding that we have to do what we do. Um, and the way that we've had people fundraise for us in the past has been crazy. There's been insane bike rides across America, marathons, um, Megan's been making the masks. Ben Porter, who you might know, is a, a really talented wildlife photographer and conservationist, has made a 2021 wildlife calendar, um, the proceeds of which will be donated, 10% um, will be donated to the Cameron Bespolka Trust. So if you still need a calendar for this year, definitely check that out. Um, and on the Cameron Bespolka Trust website, we have a shop with some nice little gift ideas, um, some really, really lovely stuff. Um, so if you fancy getting presents for friends or family or for yourself, definitely check that out. We're also on Amazon, so you can select us as your chosen charity on Amazon. So while you shop on Amazon, um, we can get donations from them via their charity scheme. Um, but that's basically, in a nutshell, the Cameron Bespolka Trust. Um, I'm sure there's probably things I've missed. Corinne's probably listening like, oh gosh, she's missed that as well. Um, but that's the Cameron Bespolka Trust um, in a nutshell in 20 minutes. There's mm -hmm. loads and loads of amazing stuff that we've been doing. So please do sign up to the newsletter and follow us on social media. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, and I don't know if it's, is it questions now, Maya? Uh, yeah, in a minute. <laughs> in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. That was, that was absolutely brilliant. Um, no problem. Do you want yeah. me to close the screen now? Oh yeah, if you could do. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing to hear, obviously, um, I'm involved with them, but it's just amazing to hear it sort of like that all together. It just sort of, yeah, it reflects on how much they do and how much sort of they've influenced a lot of young naturalists that yeah. are going out to the big world of conservation now doing a lot of brilliant things so yeah exactly. i mean a lot of people have the camera spoke just to thank and i'm sure many will do uh, in the future yeah I, I think you're right so um i have a few more questions for you um before we uh, end tonight's uh, in conservation with um, so outside the Cameron Bespoke Trust, um, I wondered sort of who your inspiration or role model was sort of in, in birding and wildlife. Yeah, um, I don't know really because I've never sort of, I never had like one person in mind that I thought, oh, I just I want to be like them. 
um, no like one particular hero, but I think for the, in terms of when I think about people that I thought sort of stood out to me during the time that I was starting out in gaining experiences and volunteering in that, um, were the, there were people at Rutland Water who were involved with the Wild Skills group that I talked about, the, the one that I used to meet with monthly. Um, Lucy McRobert was working at the Osprey Project, I think, at the time. And I just thought she's, she's one of those people that is so lovely and enthusiastic and just like straight away that like this, you don't really need an introduction, that like straight away you're, you're good mates with her, it felt like. Um, and she was one of those people that I saw at the Osprey Project and I thought, oh, she's like, she's really cool. I want to be, I want to be like her. I want to be able to have people look at me and think, oh, she seems amazing and it seems so lovely, um, as well as being fantastically knowledgeable about wildlife and birds. Um, so there was Lucy and there was um, Becky who ran the Wild Skills group, who was another person that was just, she, she recognised where people's interests were and made sure that it was nurtured and made sure that you weren't forgotten about because I think if you get involved with things where there's lots of other people you can sometimes fall into the system or into the way that things work and you kind of just go with the flow rather than someone being like oh you seem interested in this let's do this a bit more um, especially when you're younger because you don't really ask for that kind of thing when you're younger um, I don't know if it's a confidence well it must be a confidence thing as well as an experience thing um, so yeah those two definitely um in terms of people in my life who i thought were sort of really cool role models um and then outside there's like the obvious the david attenborough documentaries that i watched growing up you did um you met someone very special at uh, rutland didn't you i met sir david himself i did a, a few years ago now um he came to open up the volunteer center that they opened um it was a volunteer training center really nice like sort of pretty flashy for a nature reserve it had a green roof which i thought was really cool um and he came and did a tour and basically i was on ncs did you do ncs yeah i did i did <laughs> i was doing that and um basically becky had emailed us and was like um, Sir David is coming to open the, the centre and we'd done the wildlife garden for it through Wild Skills and so we'd made some really cute little bum, uh, not bamboo, some willow sculptures and also um, planted the plants and a lot of the herbs that were in there had grown at home in my mum's greenhouse. Oh. And, um, they were like, oh Sir David's coming to open it, it's like a big thing, there's going to be loads of people. But I was in Yorkshire at the time and so my <laughs> uncle had driven me from Yorkshire to Rutland um, wow. for a few hours just so that I could be there for Sir David to open it up and he came it was very like scheduled so we didn't really have much time with him he came um, with Tim Appleton who was the mm -hmm. reserve manager at the time he came and spoke to us for a bit and I feel like I hugged him I feel terrible <laughs> I think about the like the experience I kind of just stole him I was standing right next to him and um, he was like asking us questions about about the, the wildlife garden like oh did you do this and um, and he said, I think I corrected him on something, not in a horrible way, but he said something like, oh, I love your, um, he was like, are they, are they butterflies? I love the, I love the willow butterflies. And I was like, oh, they're actually mayflies. They're just upside down. And he was like, oh yes, of course, of course. And then like, it all happened. I was like, why did I say that? Like, it's I'm sure we didn't think any of it. Butterfly. It's a butterfly. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I met him there. Um, and that was amazing. He's just what you think he'll be. He was wearing exactly what I thought he was going to wear. You know, like the blue shirt and the, mm -hmm. the trousers. Yeah. Um, and he was really classic. Nice. Classic. <laughs> yeah. No, that was bucket list um, stuff. For sure. I mean, I'll, I'd love to meet him. I've uh, not met him yet, but I mean, yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> he's, he's. I wish it was like a different circumstance, um, which sounds really like ungrateful because I got to meet him. Um, but it would have been great to sort of chat with him, but I'm sure he doesn't really do much of that. I'm sure his life would be plagued by people wanting to sit and chat with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet thousands, not, if not millions, I mean. <laughs> so um, are you sort of involved with any other projects within conservation or organisations? Um, so I've, I've just become a, a rep for, a regional rep for the BTO um, for Cornwall that's um it's a new thing that they're trialing so we're kind of in the guinea pig phase at the minute so we're not exactly sure how it's um 
exactly how I'm going to be involved. Um, but there's three of us down here who will be working to connect young people in Cornwall with wildlife, um, birds obviously in particular with the BTO. Um, but apart from that, and obviously university, that's all I have. I don't, don't really have much time to do <laughs> all the stuff at the minute because I've also got my, my personal projects. So a little shameless plug here for my 60 Second Zoology series. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> got to plug that. <laughs> that I've been doing on YouTube. So um, it takes a surprisingly long time to create a 60 second video. Um, so I've been working on that too. Um, but yeah, I think the Cameras Boggle Trust is kind of my main thing that I'm involved with. And as trustee now, I want to make sure that I'm sort of giving it the time it deserves, really making sure that the young ambassadors are getting cool speakers and that we're sort of staying in touch with each other. Um, but yeah, for now, I think well. it, I'm, I might be forgetting something major and someone's like, you didn't give us a shout out. What made you uh, want to do the, the 60 seconds of biology little vids? Um, I was talking to um, David about this. I actually had loads of unused footage on my hard drive because I'm so bad at hoarding things. Like if I get some nice footage that I think it, that I like the look of, I don't like deleting it. Um, and for a long time, I think I was I, I was thinking, oh, I need to do some kind of video with this. But in terms of being in front of a camera, like I wasn't sure what it would do, and I didn't want it to come across like narcissistic. Like, oh, look, look at me doing like this. This is cool, but look at me because um, I wanted it to be about the wildlife. Um, and science communication is something that I'm really interested in and have enjoyed doing through these videos. So I thought uh, I'll make these videos, but I'll make them in a way that's easy to consume because obviously with social media, people need things that are snappy. Um, they want something fast. They want something that's visually stimulating. They can listen to it, but they don't have to invest too much. Um, so I just thought, you know what I'll do? It was going to be 60 second science because that rolls off the tongue a bit nicer. Um, but I thought, no, I, that, kind of cheats other people that are putting out content that is science but not like I'm, I'm very much zoology that's what the content is um and yeah I've really enjoyed it and it's gone down like better than I thought it would because I, I think it's it's pretty amateur um no I, no no <laughs> I think, no yeah, I think no, whenever no. I watch it back I'm like oh god <laughs> I think they're, they're absolutely brilliant brilliant <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, to be fair, they've given me, uh, when I was working over summer, I was saving up for a computer that I could do proper editing on because my laptop, the poor thing, has been like the one computer I've used for my whole degree. And last year when I was um, doing my dissertation on um, osprey migration, I had these massive Excel documents that just killed my poor computer and I couldn't do anything else with it. So I managed to save up and get a computer so I could do some like better editing and get some better graphics on there and um, visuals so that it's not just wildlife but there's some sort of pointers to more zoological scientific um, aspects of what I'm looking at um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah I've enjoyed doing them though they've been really good fun I've been working on the ninth episode today which oh. is going to be on feral pigeons. Um, Very nice I look forward to seeing that. Today. Yeah I wanted to get it I mean before Christmas I had like six that I'd made in advance so I could get them out um, without sort of having to do them in the week but um, I got a bit lazy over Christmas and so I've got to get this <laughs> need a break. On Friday. Yeah I need a break um, but it is quite good fun doing it but then I forget that I've got a master's to do <laughs> and what's <laughs> for the season in my life I can't spend all day editing but yeah no hopefully it will continue for a few more episodes at least. Brilliant I look forward to seeing all of them. Thank you. So um, what are you sort of aiming to do in the future? Is it something like presenting or sort of? Yeah, um, I don't know yet. I really want to be able to use my degree um, and something I've learned whilst doing my degree, which probably sounds like blindingly obvious, but I kind of only realised it a couple of months ago, is that I do want to um, investigate research a bit more. Um, I think that the degree I've done is very research based and focused and the whole point is by the time you've finished you are a researcher you, you've got all the tools you need to do research to analyze data um i hate statistics but i love report writing and i love seeing what comes out of the stats that i that i run um and i love the challenge of statistics when it's in a setting um where i know the data and i'm really familiar with it and it's something i'm passionate about and doing my masters has really shown me that i've managed to um 
I managed to to steal this master's kind of I was meant to be doing one on insect migration which was also really cool um, but a different master's course and um, they were offering a master's um, project with the British Antarctic Survey and they're like my dream employer like at the minute there's a job opening that I need to apply to um, but it's open till March so I'm taking my time but I just really want to get to the to the Antarctic or to somewhere really cool and study the species there um, because albatrosses and petrels are crazy birds they're crazy crazy birds and I just love I just love like studying them and so I want to get some more experience in conservation and research um, with science communication as like a side thing to that because I think that's gonna be really important for conservation in the next few years people need to be aware of what people are finding out in places like the Antarctic or anywhere in the world what what is happening with the natural world you know you need people who can research this and then tell us what's happening because I think uh, a lot of the time papers go out papers get churned out there's so many papers being put out that have some pretty interesting information in there and quite important information that I think is getting lost in the literature um, so I would love to sort of become a researcher with psychom on the side um, but I don't know you never know it's, an, it's a really cool subject area because there's lots of things you can do with it um, it might seem like quite a limited degree. You know, when I chose my degree of zoology, I was like, oh, I'm really worried that I'm really limiting myself and having too narrow a focus. But actually, it's it's been perfect because I've got zoology, um, I've got research skills, I've got some stats skills. Um, no matter how much I cry over stats, some of it has gone into my brain. Um, and yeah, so. I don't know. I'll probably end up doing something completely opposite to that. You'll see me in the next week doing <laughs> something completely else. Well, good luck with that job. I mean, good luck. Yeah, I mean, I'm not holding my hopes out too much because I'm sure there's people that are much more qualified than myself, but you well, got I'm sure it. you have a very good chance. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to bring uh, the first part of the In Conservation With to a close. Uh, I must also say thank you to our sponsors, uh, Leica Sport Optics. Thank you for sponsoring In Conservation With. Uh, so thank you very much, Amy. I have a couple of last questions before we end this main section. Yeah. So, Amy, what is your favourite bird? <laughs> um, by the way, Maya told me she was going to ask me this question. And I said that I would probably know by the end, but I... <laughs> um, I'm going to have to go with one of my study species. Um, and I'm gonna have to go with the giant petrel because um, one of them is actually called the Hall's giant petrel um, and I didn't know that before I started doing my research and I thought that was pretty cool um, if not that then one of the albatrosses um, I won't say which one because they might be listening <laughs> <laughs> good choices and my final question is if you could give one piece of advice uh, to young people or people in general who are starting to sort of get into nature, uh, what would it be? Um, it would be just to go for it. Um, don't think about whether you're qualified or don't think about whether you have the experience or not. Just do it. Um, I read some statistics somewhere and it wasn't really to do with this, but it was about um, job opportunities. And they were saying how um, in this sector, not, not in the sector, but in jobs, men usually apply to jobs um, that they don't, they're not necessarily qualified for, but women don't, they want to make sure they've got all the qualifications. Whether you're a woman or a male or whatever you identify as, go for it. You never know what will come from it. Um, get out there and meet people, talk to people. Um, this is all really like, it's pretty bland, isn't it? We've all heard this before, um, but it is true. You need to talk to people and, and get your name out there. Um, and let people know what you're about as well because people buy people um, when it comes to jobs or to opportunities if they know what you're like as a person they might be more likely to get you involved than they would someone that's just applied um, on paper um, I think that's probably the best thing I can advise in my very amateur opinion of what what's a good yeah, that's, way a, out there. that's a very good piece of advice yeah, I mean, I'm sure you, you probably say the same thing. You've definitely got to um, be confident and have mm. like belief in yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and networking as well, I think it's quite... <laughs> that's why events like Bird Camp or whatever like that is really important to get really to. Cool. 
Well, thank you very much. Thank you uh, for joining us, Amy, uh, on this one in consultation with. Uh, you've been brilliant, uh, as always. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so tomorrow we have another in conservation with hosted by myself um, uh, who Lucy Latwing is going to join uh, who's a brilliant nature communicator uh, she does some fabulous work on Instagram and Twitter and she's talking to us about weird and wonderful wildlife in the UK so I'm really looking forward to that 